President Trump just sat down for his first interview since his longtime personal attorney, Michael Cohen, was sentenced to prison. The president chose friendly Fox News, and here's a clip. Why did you hire Michael Cohen? Uh, he was known as a ago, fixer. I'll tell you what, first of all, first that was his all, title. He did a very fixer. low level work. Why did he you did need more him? public relations than he did law, but he did stuff. You'd see him on television, and he was okay on television. But years ago, many years, like 12, 13 years ago, he did me a favor. He was on a committee, and he was so responsive and so good. And I said, he's a nice guy. I shouldn't wait have a minute, him. wait a minute. That was the favor? Years because ago. Because people have been asking, well, what is the favor that he did the president? He was on a committee oh, no. with you. He was on a committee. It was a condominium committee many years ago. And he was a very big supporter of mine on that committee. All right, I want to bring in CNN chief political correspondent Dana Bash and CNN political commentator Essie Cup. Harris Faulkner not buying his explanation there, I will say, but let's talk about this defense that he came out of the gate with. We've heard this before when other associates have been charged, that they were a low-level employee, they did low-level work. He said this even about someone in charge of his campaign. Mm -hmm. Was Michael Cohen, Dana, a low-level employee? I mean, look, the answer is, when you're talking about the Trump organization, you had Donald Trump and you had his children and a few other people. So it depends on how you're looking at it. But I think the reality is anybody who maybe during that time got a cease and desist letter, desist letter uh, from Michael Cohen um, because he was a very active uh, lawyer fixing legal problems other than um, the people he had alleged affairs with, just regular run-of-the-mill legal problems that most businessmen have, um, or, or anything of the type would have assumed that he was somebody other than a low-level employee. But and the fact that he was put on with you on CNN and others on CNN as somebody who knows him well also flies in the face of that claim. And also just that he's known, right, Dana? Right, I see as, as a bit of a pit mole. I mean, it's hard <laughs> to believe that when that an important person's pit bull is a, a low-level person. I mean, pit bull is putting it kindly if you've ever had to work with, if you've ever had to get to Trump, you have to go through Michael Cohen. We've all had our run-ins. I, I was told once by Michael Cohen, I will end you if you ask the president, uh, he was not the president at the time, this was many years ago, if you ask Donald Trump any tough questions. Um, you know, you don't, you don't send someone out to be that aggressive with people on your behalf if you don't implicitly trust them with your business, with your life, with your family. Uh, so to say that he was sort of a uh, tertiary figure, you know, in, in the Trump orbit is simply not true. And anyone who knows the Trumps or who has had to work with them over the years knows that. Let's listen to part of this interview. Donald Trump was asked by Harris Faulkner about the hush money payments to AMI, the parent company of the National Enquirer. Here was, here's what he said. The New York Times is saying that a tabloid publisher's uh, deal to hush money um, is now endangering Trump even more. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. You know, as you look at this, what do you want the nation to know about your well, former let, let attorney me just tell you being about sentenced that yesterday? I don't think, and I have to go check, I don't think they even paid any money to that tabloid, okay? I don't think we made a payment to that tabloid. I was asking the question, let's, I don't think we, a, we made a payment. And then you have the other situation, and every lawyer, look, Trump didn't violate campaign finance laws, and neither did the president. Trump ex aid. So they're saying oh, that. Wait, I interviewed him on my program the other okay. day. That's Han von Spaskowski. Yes, here's he another says one. That. Michael Cohen pled guilty to something that's so, not even a crime. Wait a minute. These are campaign. Nobody except for me. All right, Essie, I know you were having a laugh at some of that. Uh, what's your reaction? Well, first, uh, and I'll, I'll react to that, but first, can we just just say for the record that was not an interview it was an in, it was an infomercial um you know allowing the president to provide his evidence see look look what look what this paper says and look what this person says to uh, ask the you know the president how he feels about his good approval numbers i mean i watched the whole interview it wasn't journalism that was that was an infomercial so i'm not sure that we really learned much about the investigation or China or tariffs or anything else that's going on in that orbit because all we heard was what Trump wanted to say and what Fox wanted us to hear. So I, I, I don't put a whole lot of stock in, in what the questions asked and what his answers were. 
But look, clearly he's trying to rewrite and spin this this story, which is very unbecoming. So, and he knows he's he's whatever he's saying is in front of a friendly audience. He's not going to get real pushback on whether or not he made a payment to quote unquote this tabloid, aka one of his best friends. <laughs> But I, I also wonder, and I hear you, I totally hear you on your assessment of this interview, but I also wonder if even though it's a friendly audience, Dana, it doesn't give him, uh, it, maybe it gives him a chance still to kind of step in it here. Yeah, because exactly. he is, he goes on to say at one point that no one would be treated like this over campaign finance violations but him. But key there is he's actually back to denying that he ever made these payments. So he's getting all of his facts crossed. But, right. I mean, that he, he was in a comfort zone uh, that uh, I think you're, you're right. That allowed, yeah. The questions aside, Essie's a thousand percent right on that. But that he was in a comfortable place so that he maybe said some things that, again, weren't right. Um, for example, the payment. I mean, wasn't that the whole premise of that recording that Michael Cohen made? We need to talk about the money to our friend David. Um, I mean, the, the, the assumption in the reporting was that that was David Pecker, mm -hmm. um, you know, or maybe they had a code name for somebody else, but that was certainly what it seemed to be. Um, and yes, he's going back and forth on the payments. Did he make them? Did he not make them? Uh, his attorney, Rudy Giuliani, back in May, went on Fox, surprised everybody by saying that he did um, because he knew that this was going to come.